Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the radioactive wastes of Fallout 4 have produced no shortage of vile, mutated creatures for the sole survivor to contend with and their quest to thrive. However, nearly all of the disgusting organisms that can be found in Fallout 4's Commonwealth have a number of potential special variants of themselves that can spawn in alongside the normal creature. These variants have specific differences in both stats and appearance that keep them distinguishable from the general being that they're based on. Most variations are much stronger than the original, and will begin to appear somewhat more frequently, if at all, as the player levels up. Adding these enemies to the game and increasing their spawn rates is one of the ways Bethesda tries to keep Fallout 4 challenging, even for higher leveled players. Well, there's a handful of these variants that are especially difficult to come across, with some rather interesting characteristics that I really wanted to dive into for a while. So, that's what we're gonna do today. Now, do keep in mind, I'm specifically aiming to feature uncommon creature types on this list. Though as you level up, all of these will spawn more and more often, but still being somewhat rare. However, if you spent hundreds of hours on a level 135 character, for example, some of what we're gonna show may not feel very foreign to you, but hopefully something on this list catches your eye, or you're just entertained anyway. But without further ado, let's take a look at five rare and interesting creature types you may have missed in Fallout 4. Starting off, ghouls are rotting, zombie-like, and sometimes totally feral humanoid creatures that can be found across the Commonwealth and beyond. Generally speaking, overexposure to radiation will expire most people. However, for a select few, it instead transforms them into these fascinating creatures. And some are even able to retain their intelligence and sense of humanity. Ghoulification has generally been thought of as a process somewhat unique to humans. Sure, we've all heard the whispers of a legendary ghoul whale out in the seas, but it wasn't until Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC that it was totally confirmed that ghoulification isn't a curse exclusive to mankind. This is because once the DLC has been installed, a new variant of Yao Guai will begin to spawn on rare occasions, both on the island and in the Commonwealth itself. The Yao Guai Ghoul is a new foe, significantly less common than a normal Yao Guai, and with a somehow even more repulsive appearance. These beasts pose a slightly greater threat than their generic counterparts, with 75 more HP and an additional 10 points of both damage and energy resistance also dealing 15 more points of damage per attack. Though it should be noted, Yao Guai Ghouls have less than one-third the perception, meaning they should be easier to sneak past and shake off when you're trying to get away from one. The Yao Guai Ghoul isn't even the most powerful version of that creature. That would be the Dusky Yao Guai. However, I'm just really fascinated with the ghoul's appearance. It's nice to know that mankind isn't alone when it comes to becoming zombies. Next on our list, Rad Scorpions are frustrating foes as is. Fast movement coupled with an ability to literally go underground in one place and pop out another instantly makes these arachnids especially hard to hit, and even harder to get away from. Thank god they only have 250 HP at base, right? Right? Well, allow me to introduce you to a truly aggravating opponent. Meet the Rad Scorpion Death Skull. These creepy crawlies have a small chance to begin spawning once the sole survivor has reached level 64, and they'll continue to level with you afterwards. Earning their name from the intimidating bone-like design on what could be considered their face, Death Skulls are the real deal. With 1,150 base HP, one of these has more health than a super mutant behemoth and also packs more than four times the base melee and poison damage, as well as energy resistance as normal scorpions. Altogether, these skull-faced killers are a true force to be reckoned with when you're roaming the commonwealth. Coming at number three, gulpers are massive, mutated, salamander-like creatures native to Far Harbor. Their movement style is somewhat reminiscent of Death Claws and the way they violently rush the player and dodge potential attacks. On top of that, they can even be seen wading in trees to ambush potential prey. It's truly nightmare fuel. Thank God they don't get any bigger- oh, who am I kidding? Allow me to introduce you to the Gulper Devourer. These puppies are somewhere between 30 and 50% larger than their normal- I use that word loosely, we are talking about mutated fish- Gulper cousins. This size also translates to a power disparity as well, as Gulper Devourers have about two times the everything in comparison as well, definitely making them a beast to be avoided at all costs. The size increase is especially significant, as the Gulper Devourer is the only creature variant that is actually larger than the original. 
Thankfully, as a rule, gulpers generally have poor damage resistance due to their lack of a firm exoskeleton. And with nearly two times it, the Devourer still remains especially vulnerable to miniguns and really anything else with a high rate of fire. And a bigger enemy is simply all the easier to hit. For fourth spot, Rad Rats are just one of many types of disgusting vile creatures that can be found lurking across the old Nuka World amusement park. No doubt the descendants of a previous infestation, these beings have managed to thrive in an environment rich with old sugary drinks and other sticky things to eat. These creatures, however, are even more vicious than the rodents we know in our current world. Radiation has turned them into extremely aggressive and uglier pests that can actually pack quite the punch in large groups. But amongst these four-legged foes, the special Plagued Rad Rat is certainly the most intriguing. They'll start spawning in at level 64, and have three times the HP and damage resistance as typical rats, with notably four times the energy resistance. Their appearance is especially repulsive, showing signs of infections and open wounds, but most notably, they'll glow green in the dark. It seems radiation has mutated these beings into bioluminescence, so, if you're ever wandering Nuka World at 3 in the morning, and see a number of green orbs rushing towards you in the distance, don't be too surprised. Now, before we wrap this list up, we have not one, but two honorable mentions that I'd like to share, both actually being types of Deathclaws. The first is extremely rare, dare I say, it's impossible to find. No, really, it, it is impossible to find, because Bethesda never actually implemented it into the game. Meet the Quantum Deathclaw. This blue glowing variant of our familiar lizard-like friend was supposed to make an appearance in the Nuka World DLC. However, for unknown reasons, the enemy was completely cut from the game, so the only way to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with such a creature is with console commands or mods. The Quantum Deathclaw would have had nearly identical stats to the Glowing Deathclaw, though the Quantum Claw's damage was considerably higher. The reason for this NPC's removal is, again, pretty unclear. Considering it seems to have very much been completed, and would have fit in very well with a variety of other, non-cut, quantum-themed NPC variants the Nuka World DLC introduced. But whatever the case, quantum deathclaws will certainly be missed. Our next honorable mention goes to the Chameleon Deathclaw. This indefinitely colored organism did indeed make the cut into the final game, and can be found on rare occasions once the player has surpassed level 81. What makes the Chameleon Deathclaw so unique, on top of their insane stats, is their ability to rapidly change colors while in combat, and even become invisible for short periods of time. What colors it decides to change to and how quickly it does so are factors dependent on the Chameleon's movements in battle and the surrounding area. Sometimes they'll flicker red, on other occasions they'll maintain a beautiful green skin tone for seconds at a time. From a statistics perspective, they're the second most powerful type of Deathclaw, with it being beat by the Mythic variant. I decided to include this as an honorable mention, because I personally was already pretty familiar with it before making this video, but still definitely thought its unique abilities constituted sharing it. So make sure you get a good look at this beast now, because if it has its way in battle, you won't get a chance to. Get it? Because it's a chameleon and trying to be camoufla- I'll, I'll go home now. And finally, last on our list, hermit crabs are rather rare creatures already. They only have a possibility to spawn in about four different locations in Far Harbor, and are quite fearsome. Their car slash shell makes them rather difficult to hit, and they also have an annoying tendency to spit out baby hatchlings to bite at your ankles. Well, at higher levels, you'll have a chance to encounter the elusive albino hermit crab, which spawns in at 61. There's indeed a handful of hermit crab variants. Alpha hermit crabs, glowing hermit crabs, savage hermit crabs, you get the idea. But the albino ones are by far the strongest and least common. Easily distinguishable by their white pigmentation, albinos start popping up with a minimum of 3,800 HP, compared to the generics just 750. That's nearly as much as four super mutant behemoths combined. This health is only compounded by their 300 and 350 damage and energy resistance respectively. Not only do they have a ridiculous amount of health, but your attacks against them will be less effective. If all that wasn't enough, albino crabs have a base 10 perception rating, more than double the default, making evading these crustaceans all the more frustrating. 
Now, funnily enough, in the real world, albino hermit crabs are actually a thing, and they are insanely adorable. That said, most real world hermit crabs aren't trying to rip you into tiny pieces and eat you, and those that are simply aren't capable of it. So, meh. But with that, we're going to wrap up. Five rare creature variants in Fallout 4. Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be the most interesting? Were there any you previously didn't have any knowledge of? What interesting and rare creature variants and types do you know of that I didn't cover in this list? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by everyone, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out everybody.